All right, here we are again. Back to Denver and Miko. Placing everything I owned in storage, I ran from the destroyed life I in St. Thomas to, to Denver and Miko. I thought I was putting my addictions behind me. I was grateful and very felt confident that things would be much better in Colorado. This is a, just a, a constant string of him of like when shit goes sideways in one location with some people, he just bails and runs to a new location and a new set of people. And he's constantly setting up these new safety nets for himself um, in anticipation of whatever failure it is that he's creating. Um, all right, back to this. I had old friends there and high hopes of hitting the ground running with my music. I wasn't sure how I really felt about Miko, but I knew something was drawing me toward her. I was looking forward to being with her. She met me at the airport, greeted me with her crooked rosebud smile that I would never forget. Well, Miko had pretty crooked teeth. I mean, she had a noticeably crooked teeth smile. Um, she, I only talked to her a couple of times, seemed nice enough. But, you know, this guy drawing, he's not sure what's drawing him towards her. It's, it's another free meal and another free place to sleep and another woman for free sex. So, this guy. Summer was just starting. It was 70 degrees warm for Denver. I was happy feeling that my life was changing for the better. I really hoped I was just jumping into another code. I wasn't just jumping into another codependent relationship. Codependent? Dude, your relationships were never codependent. They were always dependent. You were the dependent. Uh, with the same old patterns and same old outcome. I truly believed this time it was different. This was my last chance. You may think I'd gone through quite a bit at the, to this point, but as you can say in the show business, you ain't seen nothing yet. It took a while for me to understand that my mode of operation was a cycle that just kept repeating itself over and over, always leading me back to the same problems I had sought to free myself from. I thought I could control my life. I was in charge. I knew best. What a crock. I had spent my whole life hiding from my fears, using outside resources to enable my happiness. Little did I know what I needed was deep inside me. It had always been there, waiting to be mined and refined. It would take a while to discover the truth. This truth. He never really figured this out. Like, he, you know, this cycle conversation, is because of conversations him and I had where I explained to him what his cycle was and walked him through it and told him how to potentially break the cycle if he chose to do that. Um... But it requires a certain amount of willpower and intention. And, and if you've ever worked with drug addicts, you know that you can't make people get better. Rehab doesn't do it. If they're not um, motivated genuinely from internally to do it themselves, they'll never do it. You just can't help people who don't want your help. Um, and giving them money is not help. I loved being in Denver with Miko. It didn't take long for me to show her what a shit I was. <laughs> Um, she had injured her back, having had back surgery the year before. Back problems were not new to her. The doctor prescribed the painkillers Vicodin and Tylenol. Why not a pill freak? I think you know my history with drugs. Not particularly liking powerful pills, she took only Tylenol. Since both pills looked very similar, I thought I could switch a few things without her noticing. I ate more than a few, switching the two. One morning, I woke up to see her at the kitchen table holding a magnifying glass, counting pills. Have you switched my pills? She asked. <laughs> I was ashamed of myself and admitted my sin. She forgave me. That was the first chink in my armor. No, it was not. She had plenty of hints before this. She was ignoring them. I should have realized I was in a wonderful place and that I would soon fall completely in love with a beautiful lady, but my drinking and addiction still made, had me by the soul. Life is a growing process and a work in progress. Unfortunately, I was just a piece of work. It was an incredible leap of faith for the wonderful lady to take me in her home with her children. Her kids didn't seem to mind me being there, although they weren't the type to express their feelings. They did mind him being there. He explicitly told me at one point that the older son did not like him, ignored him, and uh, repeatedly said negative things about him to Miko in front of him. 
um, to try to get her to wise up to who he really was. So I know they were not neutral towards him. At night, I held her tight. She had a funny thing she liked to do. I don't want to hear about his little bedroom stories with this girl. <sighs> she didn't need to start my fire. I had a great passion. We slept in a cozy queen-size bed. Each night we talked, cuddled, and made love. Lying on my side, I would hold her as snugly as a tight-fitting jigsaw puzzle. I worked hard at finding a gig. The local steakhouse was my first try, a cozy bar with a great piano not far from home. Having no transportation, I could ride the bus. They had a regular pianist for happy hour, but I talked him into letting me play free on Mondays and his day off. I was hoping I could work my way into a high-end job. With a good crowd and me playing all the requests, I was confident. But by the second week there, still was no money. I mean, you, you did one gig. <laughs> he, he just said he plays there free for one night, and then the second week there's still no money course man because they don't want they don't need a guy i had been trying my best to make my talent visible to the management to no available avail after the third week in no money i knew they were just taking advantage of me <laughs> they don't want you they were doing you a favor by just letting you play it's called an open mic and they didn't even have an open mic being a professional i knew it was a bad to work for free that was the end of that yeah Realizing I needed to contribute to the household expenses, I checked the internet every day. One day I found a gig with a band that was playing in Sturgis, the famous gathering where thousands of bikers often rode many miles to show off their bikes every year. I had waited, always wanted to play there and jumped at the chance. It was initially a bit awkward, not knowing the guys in the band. For a week, I was gone playing at the Eagle Claw campground to hundreds of furry Friendly bikers who enjoyed our music. Nights I slept in a tent. These these were real party animals. Beer, liquor, and weed became breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. I missed Miko and called her every day. Meanwhile, the booze was getting the best of me, and on a few nights I wasn't at my best. After the gig ended, I was happy to get back to Miko and my dude digs. The little cash I had met helped, although she was playing the line, paying the lion's shares of the bills. My equipment was still in St. Thomas, which made finding work difficult. Miko eventually decided to pay over $800 to have my music stuff shipped to me. Everything else remained in storage at a charge of $100 a month. As long as there were no hurricanes blowing through the islands, it was safe for now. I had my musical gear, but I was still hitting a brick wall with no transportation. Miko didn't drive, but digging into her savings came through once again. I found a gray 1987 Dodge van in the paper for $1,500 that fitted my needs. It ran great and was in good shape for the year. This guy. How many vehicles have women bought for this guy at this point? A dozen? Half a dozen? Women had purchased... <laughs> I should have just kept reading. Women had purchased four of the last five vehicles I'd owned. Gee, do you think there's a pattern here? I didn't. In fact, I bragged about my good fortune. He once told me he, you know, planned to die in debt because that means he had spent more money than he made during his lifetime and that he'd come out of the game ahead of the curve. Um, and I just thought that was like the most irresponsible, um, inconsiderate thing to do. Somehow, I couldn't see the dependency on my life cycle. I believed I was entitled. Yes, you did. You were a douchebag. I wanted to spend as much time with Miko as possible and get up each morning with her. She usually started work around 7, so 5 o'clock was the wake-up call. I would sit at the kitchen table and talk. Brewing green tea, green tea for her was my joy. Each afternoon, I was there to pick her up after work and drive her the six blocks home, a labor of love. He lived with me for a short time. I'm sure that's in here. And, you know, he he spends all day hanging out at her house, using her stuff while she's working. And, um, you know, tries to spin it like he's doing some favor for her by making her tea in the morning and then picking her up from work six blocks away. She smoked, her only vice. Not wanting to smell up the house, she would sit in the garage and smoke her cigarettes. I would join her 
just wanting to be with her. Although I had never smoked cigarettes, I would ask her for a drag. We spent a lot of time in the garage, and within a few weeks, I was smoking. I didn't regret it. In fact, I really enjoyed it. At the time, I wasn't smoking pot or the other shit, and had been weaned off, weaned of my daily abuse, at least for the moment. I had a new home, and I was very happy. Mr. Jekyll and Hyde's side seemed to disappear. Something about Miko's sweetness brought out the best of me. We never argued. Maybe it was her Asian background. She was the nicest, most honest person I had ever met. Her smile and kindness were winning over my heart. She would laugh out loud with her whole soul. Sometimes she would say, we are pretty good together, aren't we? I had to agree. At times, as I drove the van, we would hold hands, swinging them back and forth. She, her smile melted my heart and she beamed with love and happiness. I still can't get that image out of my mind. Her true beauty was inside a wonderful soul. In spite of her humble way of life, she radiated the kindness in ways I was yet to completely understand. I only knew I had fallen into a bliss of unstated wonder. Meanwhile, although I was a drug addict and an alcoholic, I hid it well. She once said to me, this will always be your home. For the first time in years, I did feel at home. I wanted to do everything I could to make her happy, to give her the love she didn't seem to have gotten from her marriage. She had raised her children where her son was an honor student. Her daughter was a lovely young woman working hard to become independent. While I didn't have a close relationship with her children, I could see how her strong morals and loving motherhood had produced fine young adults, and they seemed happy. She had found someone who cared for her as much as I did. Now that I had my musical equipment and reliable transportation, I should have had no trouble finding steady work. What few gig gigs I did find, I didn't always make the best impression. <laughs> Drinking and running my mouth at times, I couldn't seem to find my place in Denver. Times had changed. Most, most of my full-time musician friends now had day jobs. The money wasn't there as it had been in the past. Music styles had changed. But I was still playing the same music I'd been performing most of my life. With no work in Denver, a major decision had to be made. Maybe I needed to find work somewhere else. Somehow, I needed to show Miko that I was responsible and could make a living playing music. I knew she respected my talents, and I needed her respect. Maybe it was the, the only way to get her full attention and prove myself. I decided I would make the sacrifice of leaving her to play. I mean, this is just more of the same pattern, right? Like, he starts feeling insecure, and the relationship's probably going sour, I'm not sure. Probably she's giving him a hard time about not paying his share of the bills and essentially being a leech, which he was in every relationship um, that I'm aware of. And um, she got tired of him, and rather than get kicked out, he chose to leave and go to somewhere else. Where? Back to Hilton Head. All right. Good stopping spot.